Hi, we're the Huge Movie Fanatics coming at you with a franchise review of an obscure 80s and 90s horror series called Ghoulies, Blah. which is predominantly not a very good franchise. <laughs> um, but uh, we'll touch on that as, as it comes. Oh, yeah, the, the reason why we're doing this is because they just released Scream, Shout Scream yeah. Factory, uh, which I'm not going to buy, hell no. Uh, it's just putting out, is it Tuesday, is it this week? It was this past Tuesday it came out. Uh, just putting out Ghoulies 1 and 2, is it a double feature? Yeah, double feature of 1 and 2. Pay individual for that. Uh, so that's the whole reason Matt thought of it, <coughs> thought of it I guess. So uh, yes. if, if you're wondering why the hell we're just out of nowhere doing a review of Ghoulies, that's why. Alright, so Ghoulies is, as we mentioned, <coughs> like kind of a, a cruddy ripoff of presumably Critters, I would imagine. Gremlins. Uh, Gremlins too, I yeah. I think, yeah. Well, Critters, uh, Ghoulies Critters came before? No. Well, around the same time as yeah, Critters. Yeah, it must have been. They're, I think they were both 84. Anyway, <laughs> off topic, Gremlins. <laughs> Uh, so <laughs> Goonies, you mean? Go oh, well, I mean, like it was a oh, ripoff of right, right, right. Uh, uh, <laughs> Grim. Okay. okay. <laughs> so Ghoulies. Um, oh shit. This the, uh, I have like an, a weird emotional attachment to these movies just because I went to uh, the video store like back when they were first. Uh, it was when the second one had come out on uh, VHS back in the day at Video Updates, if you remember those. Yeah. And my dad would always like rent a movie for mom, a movie for him, and a movie for me. And one of the ones I picked uh, was Ghoulies uh, 1, and then because 1 was there, I got Ghoulies 2 the next week. And uh, I saw Ghoulies 1, and back in the day I remember not really liking it. And I rewatched it recently, and yeah, it's not very good at all. Like, that movie is... <laughs> I rewatched it this week, one, two, oh. and three, and I could barely get through Ghoulies. Um, yeah, Ghoulies Charles, is... Charles Band production. We yes. Should, we should yeah. Say it. So, Ghoulies is a fascinating movie in that, like, there's an insanely intricate story buried in there, but it is so boring as shit, and nothing actually happens in the movie, that it's hard to follow the intricacies of that movie. Like, it's far too complex for its own damn good, and it's not not a good movie. I, like, I'm, I'm gonna give that one one and a half just because I do kind of like the uh, the look of the little creatures. Which are barely in the Yeah, they're hardly in it. I mean, it's more like the weird witchcraft fight at the end where it's like, and then they have like their laser uh, yeah, electric yeah, the, eyes. Thing, the eye thing, which is the, I, even as a kid I was like, this is stupid as shit. But <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. The first one was with the little people was the first one with the little people. Or, yeah, it's the first one with the little people, isn't it? They conjure up. He conjures up a couple of little people, and really small, really short, a guy and a girl. Anyway. I think that was the fourth one. Well, I haven't seen the fourth one, so it was the first one. I don't remember. Anyway, the first one is not a very good movie. It's uh, pretty like as I said, I'm giving it one and a half mostly, just based on. I guess memories. It has wow. an, a, a bitchin cover, and I like the little creatures in it. The, in the first one, it was the the green ghoulie, the uh, cat, and the rat. More than one green ghoulie in the in the fountain, though. Yeah, there's multiples. Uh, like the first one has multiple ghoulies all of, throughout of, of, each. All, of each of the, yeah. the things. <laughs> uh, that's dumb. Yeah, but uh, yeah. Well, the tagline, of course, and actually, I hear <laughs> I, I, I hear tell that the the poster. And the trailer actually, unless he's just making up, Charlie Ben, of course, said that they got a lot of notes, like hate mail, <clears throat> because a parent saying, my kid will not refuse us to go to the bathroom and all this stuff, which I can see being true. I don't think that was a problem for me, because I would have been in like the pottying age at <laughs> <laughs> when that came out on VHS oh, okay. and stuff. But. <clears throat> that didn't affect, your parents weren't one of the parents that sent Charlie no. Ben the note. Well, anyway, if whether it's true or not, that's kind of a funny anecdote. But anyway, is, is that your review of one? That's my review of one. Uh, I don't have too much to say about it. I have one and two I got on a, on a DVD that's just double-sided, whatever, when it came out for like five bucks, I think, half price books. And I watched it, watched them both then when I got it, whenever it was, and rewatched them now. And like I say, I could barely get through the first one. One thing that is, I was amazed to see, having rewatched the first one, is of course Richard Ban does the music, but in co cooperation with Shirley Walker. Of course, you don't know who Shirley Walker yeah. is? <laughs> what? Who's Shirley Walker? Well, she's just like Danny Elfman's, uh, whatever they call it, protege or whatever, yeah. who did the music for the Flash TV series. And 
which Batman, I watched back in the day, but I don't remember. Batman animated series, and oh, I, cool. I think in a lot of ways Shirley Walker was almost not necessarily better than Danny Elfman, but surely an equal uh, to Danny Elfman. She was great, and she died kind of actually young. I mean, she's dead now, but I thought she was great. She did a couple scores for uh, John Carpenter. She did part of uh, Escape from L.A. and all of uh, <clears throat> Memoirs of a Wizard of Man, Invisible Man, but she had this cool Danny Elfman-ish thing. I should probably start reviewing the movie now. But I, I, I do remember that the music in the opening credits had this really, really good. cool, yeah, it was kind of like a different version of the opening music of uh, Reanimator. Yeah, sir. But uh, it, was, it was really cool, the opening credits music, and then it's just like, then it only shows up at the end again. It's just such a waste of good, a good theme. But uh, they had Shirley Walker, which was crazy on there, when she must have been starting out or whatever. <coughs> but it's really stupid to me. Like, obviously, you're doing a movie that's like a rip Gremlins ripoff, and you're calling it Ghoulies, and you're having a picture of the Ghoulie, like, on the cover or whatever. And it's just like, why are they barely in the movie kind yeah. of thing is what I don't understand. It's almost like this movie was halfway into production, and it was some other stupid witchcraft movie, and then I'm like, oh, let's just shoot some shots you know, of ghoulies. Honestly, that probably is what happened. I like, there's you, apparently anyway. audio commentary on these, uh, this Blu-ray. It has, I, I pre-ordered it, and it still hasn't arrived. Oh yet. shit, you bought it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there's a reason why I bought it, and then we'll get to okay, that. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> but, uh... Not for the movies, apparently. For probably extra. So, uh, so, you know, Ghoulies One. Are you? Are you no, no. Okay. Sure? Anyway, uh, here we go. I'm wrapping up on Ghoulies One. This is going to go way too long. Boring. I don't. I've, I've said it before in movies of this kind, reviews of this kind. I'm not a you know big fan of like satanic witchcraft, you know voodoo. <laughs> not that this is voodoo, yeah. but you know what I'm saying. Just hocus pocus shit. And this is all that movie's got and whatever. And uh, half a star for Ghoulies. It's just. Dumb. I mean, the best part is like when the ghoulie pops his head out of the toilet, and that's... It's very true. And that's obviously they just shot... I mean, they shot... You can tell that's just shot in someone's... Yeah. Just closet with the toilet seat. <coughs> it's just like, whatever. The ghoulies are barely in the movie. This is just random nonsense bullshit. The, 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 I will say the best thing about the movie <clears throat> is the fact that it's over. I'm just kidding. <laughs> that I'm not watching it anymore. But the best thing about the movie for me is opening credit music. Fantastic theme, which they yeah. never used enough. And that's it. On to Ghoulies 2. Ghoulies 2. All right. So Ghoulies 2. After I saw Ghoulies 1, and I have no idea why I would have watched Ghoulies 2. Well, um, you... when I, even when I was a little kid, I must have had this OCD thing where <coughs> if I see one, I have to see them all. Probably. <laughs> but I'm really glad that I watched Ghoulies 2 because I like Ghoulies 2. Well, I that's think, why you bought them. Yeah. I'm <laughs> solely buying this. Like, if I could, I'd just buy the Blu-ray for Ghoulies 2, yeah. but it's a fucking combo disc, so I, I'm forced to <laughs> own Ghoulies 1. Uh, much like when it came out on DVD, I'm also forced to own Ghoulies 1, but I want the best possible quality for my Ghoulies 2, so that's why I bought the Blu-ray. All right. Um, and it's the first time that it has any special features, which is nice, outside of a trailer. Now, um, this movie, if I can interrupt briefly, it was directed by... No idea. Charlie Band's dead. Albert would go on to direct Robot Wars. Oh, yeah, and you're a fan of that one. Uh, not a huge. Well, I, I guess seen, I am. I yeah. do, whatever. Anyway, I haven't seen that one. I remember when you did the review for it. <laughs> two so. years ago, or yeah. three years ago, or something. But Albert Band helped Ghoulies too. That's probably what happens every time Charlie can't get anyone else to do it. Dad, come here. Well, what I will point out between one and two is the like aesthetic of the movie, the feel of the movie, the making it of a horror movie in the second one. Uh, all of that takes a fucking leap, and it like becomes. A, like a genuine kind of B horror movie, whereas the first one you'd be charitable to call it like a C horror movie. It's just, it's just kind of in existence. And I think as you you said that they had a crap movie with witchcraft, and they were like, shit, Gremlins <laughs> just came out. Let's just throw a couple of creatures in this. What do you I got? Bet you anything they did that. Uh, because that would also explain why like some of the ghoulies have redesigns in the second one. Um, <laughs> in the second one, all the all the. Uh, the ghoulies look way better uh, from the uh, from especially the little green guy. He's kind of the the head the head, head honcho. Well, he's the coolest, meanest looking one. Yeah. So, uh, although I do really like the rat uh, yeah. too. So anyway, ghoulies too. Um, I like the 
carnival feel, like that's kind of fun. I like the whole fun house thing, and it actually has like this rich story, and the actors are actually not bad in the movie, and the chick I think went on to be in Pumpkinhead, if memory serves. I don't serves. understand, she looks like 35 years old, and the kid's like 20, I don't understand. That didn't bother me, but um, but yeah, I like, uh, <coughs> anyway. I always thought the kid looked like Johnny Depp from, um, from in, as Glenn in, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, like oh, not yeah. ju not normal Johnny Depp. Where that, is that, that kid looks so familiar? He must have been something else. I, I remember looking him up years ago, like to see if he's been in things, and he has, but nothing like. So I, I, I just recognized him from Woolies too. Then <laughs> I guess you're. <laughs> he stuck with you. Uh, but um, I, I I think the second one is actually like a legitimate fun movie, and like as I say, I'm probably positing a lot of childhood memories onto it. But I watch that one every once in a while, uh, like even recently, and I I still think it's really interesting. But the last time I watched it, the most interesting thing happened while I was watching it. Um, I'm, I got I'm, sort of, <laughs> I'm a writer in my like. Uh, off time, I'm always like writing and developing short stories and novels and stuff. You must have done a lot of writing in the past 16 months. I have actually. <laughs> um, there you go. Uh, the shining a novel. The Shining Two. <laughs> but anyway, return um, to what's that hotel called? Over there. There is a Shining Two book now. Oh, Stephen King. Uh, it's called Doctor Sleep. It's really good too. Oh, okay. Um, so anyway, <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, while I was watching it this most recent time, I didn't realize how much that movie like. Um, has put, uh, uh, inspired me in a weird way, like because there's a lot of elements within that movie that I found in my other scripts in and in book. my short films that I've made, which you can watch on Piss Poor Conduct Production. <laughs> a Piss Poor Production on YouTube. Yeah, and uh, it's just kind of weird how like, Goodies too. Like it, my three-year-old self, having watched this movie, I was like, it, like the gears started working, and like weird things from this really random ass movie that probably nobody remembers uh, uh, yeah but anyway I, I think this movie is really fun uh, I, I'm gonna and I'm being charitable here it's probably a three star movie but I'm giving it three and a half just because it has uh, ha uh, had an influence on me in a weird way uh, but uh, I, I, as I say I think the characters are relatively well developed for this kind of movie seeing as how the previous one just had random ass characters that had no real motivation. You get a backstory for all of the main characters in this, and uh, the, everybody has a character arc, which you don't often get in a horror movie Be, in general. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. And uh, the, the puppets look kind of cool in this one, uh, more so than even in the sequels. Uh, this is the best looking of the Ghoulies movies. Um, in terms of the monster mayhem and stuff. So, And I like the clown scene. Uh, it's a, Fun thing where the clown gets dropped into the water and then he comes up and his arm's missing. He's like, ah, oh! that traumatized me. Huh? The clown. So they, uh, when the ghoulies break out of the uh, uh, the fun house, they start going through the whole carnival and there's like a clown that's sitting on a. Uh, oh 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 oh! He jumps into the water. Yeah, and, and falls the, the water. he falls into the water when the kid hits the little target and the ghoulies in there and. Bites off his arm. Oh, okay. One thing, are you done? Or are you I'm ready? done. That's, it's a good movie. I like it. That's why I bought this. That, that's why I bought it. I was wondering why. Um, <laughs> one thing I want to mention is I don't know if you remember, you probably do, is uh, that, that young character's grandfather or whatever. I thought he was a great character. Yeah. And I, having rewatched that movie, Bullies 2, I desperately wished, and he's probably not alive anymore, but I desperately wished he would have been at that same time in the late 80s or whatever, in like a Texas Chainsaw, he would have yeah. been a perfect Texas Chainsaw character. He had, he had that about him. And I thought, uh, I just liked that guy as a performer. I yeah, don't know if I can really remember good. ever seeing him in anything else. I've seen him for sure in other things. But to me, but... he just screamed Texas Chainsaw. If he could have, oh, that would have been awesome. But I think you're right. For me, the Ghoulies, I've only seen one, two, and three. And for me, <coughs> for me, the Ghoulies movies improve. It does the strange, not so often happening where yeah. in, in, in any series, the horror movie series in this case, or whatever you want to call this series, uh, where the movies for me get better as they progress. This is definitely for me an improvement over the first one. I thought that the you know, doing it at the carnival was a genius idea, yeah. and that way you not only do ghoulies, but you're also kind of doing fun house, as in the Toby Hooper kind of movie, yeah. fun house. So you kind of get a two for, you know, two for one in that aspect, so that's kind of cool. Um, it seems to me like, like you say, the ghoulies are more refined and more 
whatever. I think they're more utilized. Yeah, the, I mean, they're thing. characters in this in and of themselves. <laughs> right. And to be honest, shit. I can barely remember anything about the movie, but I remember that. I remember, this is also a Charlie Band production. This is the last Bully movie, as far as I know, that Charlie Band yeah. had anything to do with. Like I say, his dad, Albert, <clears throat> directed it. And uh, I'm surprised, re having rewatched it, the kind of the production value of just like the, uh, just the carnival, you know, just the whatever, the production design of the carnival environment I thought was, was pretty amazing. One thing I mentioned briefly as he was describing the girl, which I'm assuming you're talking about that like whatever, quote unquote, love interest of the younger guy guy. Yeah, it's the, just like the one who's like uh, trapped on the... Uh, Ferris wheel. Well, the she jumps movie. up there. She yeah. was like the former actor. Oh, yeah, and she, yeah, she goes up the. Yeah, uh, right, thing. yeah. And yeah. I was just having rewatched it. I'm like, holy cow, it's like just on a side note, she seemed like 36 and he's like 20. It was just like, what the hell? I, that didn't make any sense to me, but whatever. I mean, whatever, you know. That didn't You're going to really be able to tell in the close ups on the Blu ray, too. You know? Yeah, probably. When I watch it now, it's going to be like Shirley totally McLean feature <laughs> like, with this 20 year old guy. But uh, I just, that just made me curious like what the hell like what the hell but maybe she was some contractual thing maybe she owed Albert something I don't know or Albert owed, owed, owed her Albert owed <laughs> try to say that Albert owed her but anyway um, shit you know I gotta tell you for all of its improvements I still had kind of a hard time see the first good thing about the first one it was like 80 minutes long anyway but this one is like for me it kind of wears out it's hour and 52 minutes I think right no it's like hour and 40 with the credits uh, or something like that but it's still like way longer than it should be in my opinion and I think that wears out it's welcome and you didn't mention the thing which I think goes on way too long at the end where they conjure up oh, this the, huge version of like the famous yeah. toilet ghoulie to go around and eat what all is there four or five different ghoulies? Yeah, to eat, it eats all the, all but one of the ghoulies. And <coughs> the one thing that I really like about that is because they have the giant green one there, you uh, don't realize that it doesn't. Spoiler eat alert! The eats the little one. green one because you're like point. watching it, and then the, when the they cut to the toilet thing, you're like, oh yeah, that's right. I I just spent like 20 minutes watching this guy eat shit, and uh, I forgot that he didn't eat the, the little one, that's his protege. That's a good point. Which I thought was really clever, but yeah, it, I, I will say that that, uh, because it just, the I, mayhem goes on a little more. I think probably because a lot of work, I imagine, went into that damn suit, and they wanted to milk it for all it was worth, which I imagined. But it was just like, I'm gonna go gobble you up, and then there's just these slow footsteps, like, uh, here I go, I'm walking to the next yeah. guy, and it's just like... I imagine it was a heavy suit. <laughs> yeah. Well, they had that like Godzilla spine. I'm like, yeah. what the hell? I liked the spine thing. That was a nice touch over the first one, where it was just like a looked like a regular mutant baby or something. But <laughs> the second one had uh, it had a weird dinosaur spine, which I, I liked, and it had like the weird lizard dog uh, new gooey as well that was running around the floor. I liked that one too. Before I end, one thing I also like is a guy who was kind of in a Charlie Band staple guy who'll show up again. He's probably in more, but he'll show up again in Dollman vs. Demonic Toys, which is that, <clears throat> which is that small little person guy. Oh yeah, he's, he's which good. which I I, I I like I like that guy. I think I've only maybe seen him in just this in Dollman vs. Demonic Toys. He's was like he a, in Troll. I haven't seen Troll. Oh, but I, that I like Troll too. I think that's a, I think that's a Charlie Band Troll. movie, so he very well could have been. Yeah. But I just liked, He's I a just like that guy, and I think it's so cool that, I mean. <clears throat> I don't know, he's perfectly, just because he's a little person, I guess it makes sense that he's in this movie because it's a carnival, but what I love about it is it's like they don't make anything out of it. He, he's, in, he's in like a little wolfman outfit, but it's not, they don't really say anything about his size necessarily. No. And I just love that. He's just a, and I wish there could be more of that in movies because yeah. so many times there's a little person in the movie and he's just like a freaking whatever those people are from Wizard of Oz. Yeah, Munchkin. And it's just like, put a little person or big person or whatever person in a movie and just have them be a character. They live among us in the world. Yeah, they, uh, have this, them live among the characters in movies. In uh, Death at a Funeral they do that um, with, uh, and uh, like he's just, they, like that movie's a comedy but not a single reference is made to the fact that he's a little person and he's one of the main characters in it and he's the best part of the movie and like I, I really appreciated that about that movie and this movie as well. They they mention it once where he, he gets picked up at a certain point yeah, uh, well, but I mean that's the only thing and that's just, it. it's by uh -huh. a bully so the bully could yeah. have very well picked up whoever was in the costume. Yeah. 
But that's in your like in closing on my part two review, like you said, it's unbelievable for what this B or almost B minus movie or B and a half or whatever <laughs> yeah. halfway to C movie is for having so many characters with arcs, like you said, you know. Yeah. Uh, and even the little person, and instead of just the guy and the girl surviving at the end, it's like guy and girl, little person, and yeah. Um, I guess we'll leave it at that. It's an improvement, but still, it's only like for me, it's a star, one star <laughs> movie. I hate. It's, I mean, it's, it's overly long for me. Wears out. It's welcome, and it's a one star for Ghoulies Two. All right, so Ghoulies Three. I've <coughs> I'm not a fan of Ghoulies Three in at all. Um, I honestly, I think that's the worst of the four movies. Um, because like in the first one you have this weird horror movie thing and it kind of it's like it's kind of horror movie but it's not really it's more weird possession dark magic shit which also I'm not too crazy into um, so I didn't like it the second one is like a straight-up horror movie and it's like uh, I feel like there was an audience who was like wait how come there's this is this isn't funny I was expecting funny because this has a funny tagline gremlins. And, and yeah I'm expecting gremlins and at this point gremlins 2 had come out and that <laughs> oh, they were shit. Uh, moving around and even talking at uh, with uh, uh, some of the gremlins and that, so I feel like this was a the answer to Gremlins too, where they're like, all right, let's ditch the horror entirely and just make it scare, uh, uh, make it funny, just like let's let's go for a funny horror movie, and it didn't work at all for me, and I did not like the talking ghoulies and like nothing really, nothing worked at all for me outside of I like the look of the, the three that they have in this one. Um, for me, the looks keep on getting refined, and I like how they look in this one as well. I, I still don't like the, the, as much the, guy. the yeah, second well, one, that's, but, that's you're right. but uh, I, they do look better uh, for the most part. Um, well, it should be noted that John Carl Beetler, who directed, who did all the ghoulie effects for all the three, maybe fourth, I don't know anything about the fourth, <laughs> movies, directed this, he's the guy who directed Friday, New Blood, Part 7 New Blood. Yeah. And I like him, he's a good guy. I mean, he, I think he did a fantastic job with, I mean, any fan of Friday 13, Part 7 thinks he did a yeah. fantastic job with that. And that was everything. the one I liked the most, if you will remember. Yeah, recall. I think I remember that. And I just liked the guy any time I see interviews with him, and I guess that's what I want to say about uh, So, I, for me, I'd give this one a, a one star. It's not, this is not my cup of tea. The one thing that I like about this is that, uh, it's set on a college campus, and in an early college campus scene, if you look into the background, you can see Matthew Lillard oh, from Scream. I was gonna this say was that. his very first movie. So, oh, fun facts. Oh, I didn't, I didn't mean to steal your thunder, but <laughs> yeah. So, um, thoughts. So uh, these are the. I, I bought this VHS previously viewed back probably in '91 or two, because it was yeah something like, something like that. And this is the first Ghoulies movie I saw. Oh, really? So, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, and obviously, and I just rewatched the same VHS just this past week that I had bought back then. That's the only version I have of it. And it's just like, I was like, having, you know, basically trudged through the first two, I was like, oh, wow. So for me, this is the best of the, I've only seen one, two, or three. For me, it's my favorite Ghoulies. I don't mind that they talk. To me, it was, it was almost like, for me, it works. You know, it's kind of like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> they say stupid shit like I can't think of any stupid shit he says but okay, maybe. they say this they all say stupid for me it just I guess it gave more character to him or whatever and it for me like as the three movies progress they become more and more aware of like well this is this movie's called ghoulies so let's make them more of a part of the movie and for me just like two made them more of a part of the movie three continues that and <clears throat> makes them more part of the movie and they I, I like the comic comedy or comic aspect to it and I didn't I didn't think about you know obviously the gremlins 2 thing because I kind of forgot all about gremlins 2 but yeah I'm not a fan of that either as I, I probably out. haven't seen it since 91 but <laughs> But uh, I like the direction this, I actually liked how it looked, I mean, for being a relatively, you know, low budget movie, they had a kind of a, it had a look that I liked, like they say, late, late 80s, early 90s, I really liked that film stock, and yeah, had a great look. Um, for me, I must have watched only like the first uh, half hour, or hour when I was a kid, because I don't remember anything about like the last third when I watched it and rewatched it. I was like, oh, I must have just watched like the boobs and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> obviously, this is the first one that was R rated as well. Yeah, which I appreciate. I mean, obviously, if ghoulies go to college, I mean, you better show some. And they, they did. There's one girl who probably the very same year starter had a part in uh, 
the Slumber Party Massacre 3 as well, the one who dies in the I've shower. I've only seen the first Slumber, Slumber Party oh, Massacre. Okay, well 2 is not worth seeing and 3 is kind of funny in a dumb way. So, uh, so she's, you know, she's in this and hiding her hiding her tits and it's just like, but she's probably got implants, but you know what's so weird to me is like when the girl gets implants and then she's like in a movie and she's like, oh, but whatever, they're your implants, you hide them. Why would you buy them if you're just going to hide them, but whatever. You can fill out your top, I guess, with whatever, but anyway. I remember, well, I've said it before in reviews that as a, as a young kid, I'd always just get so anxious, like with what's her name in Halloween 4, you know. Can't remember her name, but Kathleen Kidmount or whatever. <clears throat> it's just like, let me see it! But anyway, I'm just reviewing tits now, but <laughs> <clears throat> having rewatched it, I always thought, this is really kind of fun. It's got that one guy from Dolls, and uh, in the same year he was in RoboCop 2 as that fat kind of cop who sold out the police force or whatever. I don't remember. Anyway, I kind of liked that guy, and he was going <coughs> to be in whatever, uh, pre-hysteria and all that kind of stuff. I like so pre-hysteria. I haven't seen it. <laughs> But uh, long story, God, this review is going on. Right I know this is long like story questions. short. One and one quarter star for Ghoulies Three. This is the last one I've seen, and I guess we'll leave it at that. Uh, it's it's just you don't take it seriously. It's a fun romp. Oh, I like the the uh, the idea of having that like porcelain like specially made Ghoulies toilet with like the oh, three yeah. faces. Yeah. Little t touches like that I really appreciate. I thought that was kind of neat. And too. I thought this movie had an overall great look to it. I just thought, even on VHS, it looked for me fantastic, but it's still one, what did I say, one quarter star? One and one quarter star. Um, and Matt's going to finish off I'm with a solo review for Ghoulies 4. Ghoulies 4, did that have a subtitle? I don't remember. I, I don't know. Uh, I've seen this movie once, and I liked it better than I expected I would, because I, I didn't even know this movie existed for the longest time, and then I found it in a magazine once, and I was like, <coughs> I'm going to seek this movie out, and I went to Schinder's when that existed, and that uh, they, they had a copy. And so, um, I got it, and it's weird because it's like very much not a Ghoulies movie, but at the same time, it's a direct sequel to the first movie. Uh, it stars the oh. main guy from that, oh. and it takes place ten years later because I think it was 1994. Oh, and yeah. He's become like a hard uh, detective kind of thing, and he's like in this suit and, uh, from memory. As I said, I'm go this is going back like ten years last time I saw it. But um, he's become a detective and whatnot, and he's uh, like seeking out uh, like answers to this crime that's happened. And there are two ghoulies in it. And they are little people in costumes that look nothing like the three from the pre uh, the, from the three previous movies. Um, <coughs> they're their own unique look, and they're talking and whatnot. And um, I gave it credit because it tied up weird loose ends and stuff to, from the first movie. And I liked it more than the first movie. I'm, I'm also going to give it one and a half. So I mean, it, I, I guess I liked it the same as the first movie, but uh, it just was like kind of a purposeless movie but they were like well it's the 10 year anniversary we should we should cater to this audience but we're not going to give them the creatures that they love because uh, it's cost too much and I, I think that the ghoulies were good guys in this one sort of aiding him uh, if memory serves but I could be wrong um, but yeah it had the weird witchcraft vibe again uh, which had been absent pretty much since, since one. one I mean there's a little bit of witchcraft at the book in the second one but not really there because uh, that's all about like Magic. Anyway, so anyway, um, so I'm giving this one and a half stars. Uh, it's worth seeing if you like the first one. I don't know why you would, but uh, uh, oddly enough, three never went to DVD as far as I could ever find. Four did, so you can buy them on DVD. One, two, th uh, one, two, and four, or on VHS, all four of them, or now on Blu-ray, just one and two. So. <laughs> well, and four yeah. Blu-ray, four K, none of them probably. <laughs> probably not. I, I was shocked this got a Blu-ray release, uh, one quite two. honest, yeah. But, um, yeah, I, so we did this whole thing because I like the second one and it's a childhood favorite, so there you have it. And it's relevant because the first two have just come out yeah. on Blu-ray, courtesy of Scream Factory. So thank you very much for watching. If anyone made it all the way to the end, you're a true... Way to go. You're, yeah. you're a true fellow fanatic, I'll we tell you We were complaining that. that all these movies uh, overstayed their welcome, and we we're sitting here for like 34 minutes talking about ghoulies. <laughs> This is the longest anybody's talked about this in years. <laughs> Probably since 94. <laughs> Probably. Or 91. Anyway, are you done? Yeah, I'm done. Thank you very much for watching if you did, and catch you next time, and we'll get you in the end. <laughs>